Well, hello everyone, and welcome to week 22 of my life as a CTC cadet pilot. This week we have done nothing but meteorology. So, so it's the first time we've uh, done meteorology, so we spent a whole week on it. Covered a hell of a lot. I'm going to basically just go through and do a quick brief overview of what, what MET consists of. Uh, so, the very first thing you learn about in meteorology is about the atmosphere. And essentially, one of the first things you learn about is what's called the International Standard Atmosphere, or ISA for short. And it basically means that normally, up until about 36,000 feet, the temperature will decrease by 2 degrees per thousand feet. After that, it is fairly stable. Uh, up to the altitudes that a normal commercial aircraft will fly, and obviously it will vary quite a bit up when you get up into the um, thermosphere. Um, but of course that's an international standard atmosphere and no day is standard, and if you do find a day that is standard then, well, <laughs> it just doesn't happen. Um, we also talk a bit about atmospheric pressure, so obviously at the higher you go, the less pressure there is in the air and a bit about atmospheric density uh, also a bit about humidity so we're talking about um, two lapse rates so when I mentioned about ISA we talk about two degrees per thousand feet but if the air is saturated with moisture then that rate decreases so it decreases at a slower rate and that's because water vapour in the air is releasing latent heat which is heat in the atmosphere but at the opposite end of the scale, if the air is very dry, we follow what's known as the dry adiabatic lapse rate, which is at 3 degrees per thousand feet. So we only use that 2 degrees as like a uh, baseline. Uh, we also studied quite a bit about clouds this week, so a bit about how they form, what sort of effect that this can have on the aircraft, and basically which ones can you go in and which ones can't you go in and what kind of weather phenomena is associated with these clouds. So we also have to know all the different classifications of clouds, so things like um, a cumulonimbus cloud, essentially a massive thunderstorm. They've been described as shaped like an anvil and you cannot realistically fly within 20 miles of these because the turbulence is capable of ripping your aircraft apart and if that doesn't rip your aircraft after part, you'll be slammed into the ground by a downdraft. So, in short, avoid cumulonimbus clouds. Uh, chapter 8 Precipitation. Well, <laughs> I've just talked about cumulonimbus, so a lot of precipitation there. Uh, thunderstorms, again, cumulonimbus. Um, icing. That's, again, the reason why we have to identify the clouds and how the atmosphere works is so we can identify which areas are susceptible to icing. For example, if you go into an area where the temperature is quite cold, then you could get ice, well obviously you'll get ice, that's a bit of a stupid statement I just said there. It's a bit late, late and it's Sunday and I've been question banking all weekend, so forgive me if I sound a bit stupider than norm normal this week, but there we go. Uh, oh yeah, icing. What can I say about icing? Um, as one thing that I did learn a fair bit about, and that's something called diversia. And that's where you'll get rainfall in the air, and it will start at a above freezing temperature, and then it descends into an area where the temperature is below freezing. So this is most commonly associated with a warm front. And if that strikes your aircraft, well, it's super cooled water droplets, so you can have ice build up alarmingly quick to the point where any anti-icing or de-icing system may not be able to get rid of the ice quick enough. So you've got to be careful with some weather phenomena. Uh, we'll talk a bit about visibility. So for example, rain, that can cause bad visibility, but even like heavy rain, you can still see a fair way through that. The worst kind of rain is like light drizzle. Visibility can easily drop below one mile, which is still reasonable. But other things that can affect visibility, things like pollution. So if you're flying in, uh, I don't know, 
some parts of Asia can get some very bad pollution. So it's not just about rain and snow you've got to worry about. It's about all the air. Basically everything is in the air, so air particles. And finally, at the end of this week, we talk a bit about wind and local winds. So we talk about things like... Um, if you go on like the web, web, yeah, if you watch a weather forecast, you'll see like things like isobars on there, and that's showing like the wind speed direction, and it also tells us where high and low pressure is. So if you've got high pressure, it's known as an anticyclone. Generally, the weather is stable, but you can get some poor visibility in anticyclones. Whereas in low pressure areas, you can get some pretty good visibility when it's not chucking it down with rain because you do generally get some bad weather right, with low pressure. One of the things that, that we did learn is uh, from in the Northern Hemisphere, if you have your back to the wind and you extend your left arm out, your left arm is pointing towards the low pressure system. And it's the exact opposite in the Southern Hemisphere. So that's quite a useful thing to, to know. So if you're in an airfield, open area, back to the wind, left arm out, you know where the bad weather's generally going to be. So that's meteorology for this week. Um, as I said, I'm recording this on Sunday, so I've also had the whole weekend to study. Um, in the ev evenings, while studying, I've been doing a bit of light question banking just to see where my knowledge is at. And it seems pretty good. I mean, if you're not already aware, I've got a PPL license, so I have studied meteorology to a basic level. And I would say about half of what I've seen so far I've recognised, so that has given me a bit of an advantage. So this weekend, rather than focusing on a subject that I'm reasonably competent at, I went for a subject that I've been moaning about the last couple of weeks, and that's air law. And I think it was last week's episode, I mentioned that when I was question banking, I was scoring in the high 60s on average, which is all right at this stage, but it's not particularly high and considering all exams in a few weeks time really wanted to work on that so i've literally spent the whole of saturday and today sunday doing question bank for air law and i actually in these two days i've completed the bgs question bank which when i worked it out i've done just over 700 questions and good news is that, that it has worked so I'm now starting to see scores in the 80s rather than the 60s and I think my overall average for I think it was for over 700 questions it was 75% so and of course during the last few attempts I've been averaging low 80s so it's been a tough tough week overall a tough weekend but I feel like I might actually be able to pass air law now. Whereas if you asked me two weeks ago, how's air law going? I would have said no chance of passing it. So even even when you feel like you're not going to pass something, just keep on at it and it will, it will click eventually. For air law, you just have to question bank. For meteorology, you have to understand the subject. So it will vary from subject to subject. So... I've uh, been going on for a little bit, bit, little bit now. So what have we got next week? Well, I'm afraid it's all meteorology again. But uh, let's have a look. Yeah, I won't, I won't spoil anything that's coming up next week. I'll save that for next week's episode. But uh, yeah, the reason why I did a lot of work this weekend is because next weekend I'm actually going to be going, going home to sort a few, few things out. Uh, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to record next week. So if I don't record next week, I'll record the week after and round up two weeks. No problem doing that. But uh, we will see if the video goes up next week. Anyhow, thank you very much for watching the video. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and share the uh, series with anyone that you feel who would benefit from this information that I'm providing. As a matter of fact, at the time of recording this, I've just released... Uh, released my first couple of weeks of episodes and yeah I'm pleased with the response so I'm definitely going to as long as exams and studying permits I will continue this series as long as the response is reasonable because at the end of the day I want to give you guys an, a sort of impression of my experiences of what it's like to study at CTC for the ATPL license so on that note I'll 
again, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.